What's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1997 Ford F250 HD. Up front is a 5.8 liter V8 and down below is a four speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here Ford F250 for a couple of reasons. First of all, just visually, this is my favorite generation of the Ford F series. But the second and more important reason is the fact that this is a 1997. This is the last year of this body style and the last year before the heavy duty trucks split off from the lighter duty trucks forming the Super Duty series that we still see to this day. This is before the Super Duties. This was just the Heavy Duty. And so we'll talk about that a little bit more towards the end of the video. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, ZachPradle.com, where you can buy stickers like this retro sticker pack or big friggin' bottle sticker, both with free shipping. You could also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form. And you could read my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But let's get back to that 5.8 liter V8 under the hood. Well, it's a Windsor V8 and there was a bunch of engines offered in this generation of not only F series, but F 250s. It makes 210 horsepower and 325 foot pounds of torque. Now I've also driven the big block seven and a half liter gasoline engine. So if you want to see that video, I'll leave it at the end of this one. But the 5.8 Windsor can actually trace its roots all the way back to the late 1960s where it debuted in the Mustang and Galaxy for the 1969 model year. And this engine was even used in boats throughout the last few decades of the 1900s. I know that's a really dramatic way to say the 70s, 80s, and 90s, but yeah, it's the way I chose. Now, of course, there were changes that came with that engine throughout the almost 40 years of its life, but not much. This was kind of a bread and butter, slap it in whatever kind of engine. And it got a lot of applications in Ford, but this is actually the final vehicle to have it in the final year of the final vehicle to have it. This is the newest Windsor 5.8 you could probably find. And that's really interesting. Now you could of course get the diesel version, the Power Stroke, but those go for a lot more money because the Power Strokes were pretty dang good around this era and everyone wants them. Like I said, paired to it, automatic transmission, not really writing any history books here with that. It still works, it does the job and it's heavy duty enough to stay working for a while. Last but not least, this here F250 is four wheel drive. And we'll talk about how to select that a little bit later on. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have a bunch of gauges. On the left is my oil pressure and coolant temperature. In the center, I get my speedometer and on the right, I get my battery voltage and fuel. Now there is something interesting about the fuel we'll talk about in a second. On the steering wheel on the left and right, I have my cruise control options. That's all I get here in the F250 on the steering wheel. However, cruise control is very nice given the fact that this is a very, very basic work truck variant. The overall steering wheel is kind of interesting because the thumb grasps are actually very, very low, which I normally associate with big cruising cars, but this is a workhorse. Kind of an interesting feeling. Off to the left, I have my headlights and then I have my fuel switch. So this F-250 is outfitted from the factory with two different fuel tanks. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I'll put the total gallons up on the screen split between the two tanks. And so what this switch does is it actually allows you to pull fuel either from the front or rear tank, depending on whichever one you want to choose that day or that hour or that minute. The interesting thing, like I said, with the fuel gauge is when you do switch tanks, the fuel gauge will then read for the other tank, but it takes a second to actually switch over. It's kind of fun to watch. You hit the button and then your fuel starts going up or down. On the door, I just have my window crank and handle and that's it. Moving into the center, this is the original Ford radio. I absolutely love that. Very, very basic. No CD, no cassette, just AM and FM and a little clock. Then I do have my climate controls again very, very basic. This is a work truck. And then I get a 12 volt outlet and of course your ashtray. Gotta have an ashtray and cigarette lighter because it is the 1900s after all. And then I don't get anything on the floor besides the four wheel drive setting. So 
I do have this manual lever for the four wheel drive. However, it has electronically locking hubs, which is a very, very nice feature and really adds to the ruggedness of the F-250. And so because of this emptiness in the center console, there are no cup holders in the 97 F-250. So unfortunately, unlike its modern counterparts, the 1997 OBS Ford F-250 HD fails the big friggin' bottle test. The seat is a bench seat. It has almost no design to it. Now these are seat covers, of course, because this is a workhorse. But even without them, the seats look like any bench seat you'd find in any vehicle ever made in history. So they are decently comfortable. They do have a nice spring to them. Don't expect them to pamper you. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so I'm in the back of the 1997 Ford F-250. Once I put this up, it's not super spacious, but this little bench seat will definitely do the job. I get seat belts. I have a seat. Uh, that's it. That's uh, pretty much it. But that's all you really need. If you want to carry more people, Ford said here, carry more people. Here's a bench. Here's some seat belts. Have at it. And that's what it is. It's very simple, very basic. And you can fold these seats. So if you want more room back here, to either lock stuff in the vehicle or just maybe put subs or something like that. You can absolutely do that back here. Let's go hop around back. We'll talk about the cargo space and truck bed because I asked the owner to do something special. So let's talk about it. So here is the back of the F-250 and I asked the owner, Dan, to fill it with his firewood. Um, he also has a YouTube channel cutting and splitting logs and stuff like that, which will be down in the description below. But I just love the way it looks. Super basic and honest truck bed, nothing to write home about but this truck will do the work every single day and I love it. And if that's not enough, <laughs> Dan has a second one for the trailer also filled with firewood. I love that. Now we got to talk about the looks and this is hands down my favorite part of this F-250. I love this body style. It's commonly referred to as an OBS, this generation of the Ford F series. What that means is just old body style. You can actually kind of use that term for anything you want. However, it seems to have sort of stuck with these kinds of trucks and I love it. I also love the tan. This was actually a government truck before my friend Dan owned it. So he's actually the first registered owner, even though it's a 97 and he picked it up not too long ago. And so with that being covered, let's get to my final thoughts. What do I think driving a gasoline V8 F250 from 1997. Well, I really, really love this truck. This, I feel like, was the final frontier for the basic, rugged, no frills F series. The next generation, when they split off to the Super Duties, they got a lot more complicated. They started introducing the Triton V8 and V10, which we all know how that story ended. Don't ask it about its spark plugs. This was kind of the last one. Now, driving it, it's not comfortable, it's not plush, it's not reassuring me in any way. But it's up before the crack of dawn, hauling wood, doing the job, and it doesn't complain about it. Modern trucks are so complicated. And the gadgets and gizmos are fun. They are, they're cool. The, the area lighting on the new F-250s where you could light up a work site with your truck and the rear outlets in the bed that you could power a welder with. Yeah, that's all super, super cool. But what happens when it breaks? That cool factor is going to be meaningless in a matter of seconds. This has fewer breakable parts, honest. No, it's not flashy. It's not gonna win you any street cred. And that's what I love and respect about this F-250. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Dan from Atkins Rotary for letting me take out his F-250. Dan and the whole Atkins family has been absolutely awesome. So welcoming during my time here in Washington State. They are absolutely awesome. Dan also has his own YouTube channel where, as you can see in the back, he actually does wood cutting. On his window here is a bunch of other wood cutting YouTubers. So hey, if this car thing doesn't work out, catch me chopping logs. But again, huge thank you to Dan. He's been absolutely awesome. He's been a huge help over the years and I'm very, very thankful for his friendship. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.